Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at some more uh, options for tools that we have over here in the toolbar. In fact, in the last video, we only did the selection tool and the draw rectangle tool. So I have the plus sign and I'll zoom in here, use the scroll wheel to kind of pan up a little bit. Um, so yeah, we can draw a rectangle. And if you notice when we first draw it, which was something I didn't go over, uh, we have these little white squares that we can click on to control the, the size of it before we get to the selection. Of, we can also control the size this way. But when we first drew it, it creates these options. Uh, we have these two white squares and then a white circle. And this white circle controls the roundness of the corners of the rectangle, which is pretty cool. So we can control that and make it look more like a, in fact, if we were to do this uh, and then bring it in, we can make it look almost like a circle, almost. Give it rounded corners. To get to that option, it sends us there by default when we first draw the shape. But if we double, if we click, and then we click again, we know we get to the skew and the rotation. But if we click very quickly, double click, then we get to the, that third option, which is these. We have these different handles on the corners where we can create uh, rounded corners, and we can also resize the shape that way. So I show that because we're going to be playing with some different shapes uh, today. And each shape has different options um, when you get to these white circles and squares. These handles do different things for different shapes. But uh, these black handles with the arrows, they all behave the same for every shape we draw. So I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to hit the delete key and delete both of these. And we're going to come here to the circle tool. We're going to draw a circle. So or an oval, so I'll just drag and unclick and we have this. So we see we have these handles up here. We can change the height of the circle. We change the width of the circle. Oh, so see what I did there? I actually drew another blue circle, a teeny tiny one over top of this because my circle tool was still selected and I barely missed the handle. So I can see if I come here to the selection tool, this is what I drew. I'll drag it down here. So I drew this, I have another circle now right here. Um, so to get back to those options though that I was going to show you, if we double click very quickly we get to these different handles where we can control uh, different things. And this, the most important one for the circle is this teeny little one over here controls th so that we can make like a Pac-Man style. So here's how it works. If you're outside, I'm, I have my left mouse clicker held in right now. If we're outside of the circle it'll create this sort of like pie chart looking thing where we can go all the way down and create just a sliver. We can come here and create a Pac-Man. If I move my cursor into the inside of the circle, it'll change and then we'll create sort of like a half moon type shape. So there's two different ways we can create a partial circle. We can do a partial like this or we can do a partial like this and it depends on where your mouse cursor is. So play with that and get familiar with how that works. There's a lot of times that we'll, you'll wanna use a half circle and so you'll notice there's no half circle tool, instead you just draw a circle and then control it this way. And then we come back to our selection and we can change it, we can move it around, we can still do like the skew, we can do the rotation um, the same way. Oops, click a second time to get to rotation. And so this, you know, there's a time you'll want to draw an object just like this. So that's how you do it. And then if we ever want to make this a full circle, if we double click very quickly, always the options for whatever for whatever tool, you, whatever operation you're on with that object, the options for it will be at the very top here by default. And we can click this full circle and it'll complete the whole circle again. Or we can, well, yeah, that's basically what we'll do. Um, and then we can change the size, the radius, um, the units that it's in. Uh, okay, I'm gonna delete this circle, so I'll hit delete. One thing I wanna show you too, if we select our object, maybe I'll resize this a little bit, we have this object selected, and you'll notice this one actually has, uh, our, look how big our stroke is on this one compared to the last one. In fact, if I click the circle tool and draw another circle, they're different, right? This one has a, a smaller stroke, this one has a larger stroke. That's because what, that's because this one, we scaled it up, we drew a small circle, I'll do another circle down here, we drew a tiny circle, and then we went to the resize, or we went to get our selection, and we resized it using these bars, and it scaled proportionally the stroke and the also on the size of the circle. So now this stroke size is gonna be a different size and we'll look at the, the settings to control the stroke size in a minute. Um, 
but you'll but notice that it is a different stroke than if we just draw a regular circle. And this one does have a stroke. We can see if we click make it white, we see it has a stroke. And actually the stroke color is a, not even quite black. It's a blue color. And again, to change the stroke, if I have this selected, to change the fill color, we just left click, make this one like red, for example. And then to change the stroke color, we hold down the shift key and click whatever we want the stroke to be. So we can change it to a different color. I'll just make it black though. Uh, and then also we have a little bit of transparency here because what Inkscape does, it remembers the settings that you were using last time. And so we have a tiny bit of transparency because you can see through this shape. You can see through to the shape behind it. You can see that circle a little bit below. If I want to bring this shape forward, I can hit this raise, uh, raise up a level. It's not a layer necessarily. There are different layers here that we'll play with later on in Inkscape. But this is just levels, what level these different shapes appear on. So if I want this white to appear on the very top level, I can just click this one that raises it all the way to the top level. Whatever item is selected will be raised to the top level. And if I want it to go down, I can just raise it down one level at a time, or I can raise it all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom. So there's some options that we have for, those, for that tool. Um, I'm not going to change the transparency yet, so yours might be solid. Um, but we'll look at that um, in the next video. We'll look at how to change transparency and, and color and things like that uh, in more detail than just using the color below here. Uh, this next shape we're going to look at is the star and polygon. So we'll left click, we'll drag, we can create. You'll notice it just does whatever the last color we had selected was. So if we select green, it'll turn green. And if we draw another star, it'll be green. Um, the star has some different options too. So if we want to click on it, if we double click very quickly, we get a we notice we get these white handles again. So these ones, we can change the pointiness of the star, we make it like kind of a stubby little fat star. We can make it very pointy, and we can also change where. Oops, I missed this one. Hit the delete key. We can also change on this star where the points come together on this inner part. So we can actually cross it over multiple times and create kind of an interesting shape. Um, we can make it also very pointy this way or very stubby this way. Um, and then also with the star, we have different options up here. So right now we see we have five corners, but if we wanted to make a triangle, we can just go down to three corners and now we have a triangle. We can make that kind of more like a triangle or we can make it, yeah, basically a three cornered shape. And then we can make this have uh, more as well. We can have it have lots of different corners and we can still control the pointiness of these. Ah, so what I'm doing, I'm accidentally clicked, so I'm hit the delete key. I keep trying to click on those handles and the star tool is still selected, so I'm accidentally creating a second little star. But what I want is to is to click on this handle right here and make that very into there, or we can make it come out to there and have it be sort of like an object like this. We can change and have, give it different uh, yeah, different characteristics. And so this is one that we can really play with a lot and make a lot of different cool shapes just by how we uh, how we do it. So it's not just a shape. Like I said, it's not just a circle. It's We can make lots of different shapes by controlling the different options of that shape. So always look at the top. You'll see some different options for things you can do. Uh, moving on, we can do this spiral tool. Sometimes we'll use this. So it just creates a nice little spiral. And then we can, again, move it. So these black handles are always the same. These black arrows always just let us resize, let us rotate. We can rotate the star too if we want. We just click and then click a second time to get to those rotate options. Um, then this one, if we double click very quickly, we have options for changing the size or kind of the op different options for this spiral, like how tight the spiral is. And yeah. Uh, that's really the, that's, I'm just want to go over the shape tools. There's more tools down here, but we're not going to, we'll go over these ones in future videos. I guess with the exception of like text, we can just click on the text tool and type and start typing in, you know, things. Um, and then we can change, uh, I don't know if we'll change color of text. Yeah, well, we can change the color of the text down here. And then there's a lot more options for text. We'll do a whole, a whole separate video just on text. Uh, but the rest of these we're not going to really play with. And in fact, I'm going to give you like a word of caution. 
you'll if you want to play with some of these yourself you'll notice there's like an eraser tool but this is a tool that i literally never use ever in inkscape and if you if you've used photoshop um, or GIMP or maybe even Microsoft Paint, you might be used to using this tool where you can like erase certain parts. Uh, I don't know why that even did. Oh, it's because uh, we're erasing in blue. Oh, so uh, yeah, so basically we can like cut into the shape and write like erase parts of it. But it starts to get things very, very messy. And the reason is you're doing freehand, you're doing freehand erasing. And the way Inkscape works is that it creates these, it creates an object it, based on math. So this star is a very simple um, object for the computer. It just says, all right, make a star based off of these points. Why, why am I in this tool? So now I'm editing this just, just node by node. So we have like basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's basically saying, Here's the 10 points for this star. And so just draw a straight line between each of these 10 points and you've got your object. And that's why it doesn't matter how big it is. So we can scale this incredibly large and it won't ever lose its clarity or we can scale it super, super tiny as well. And these objects are all just stay nice. Like if we zoom into the point, this point right here, look at this, it doesn't ever get grainy ever. It just stays nice and sharp always, whether we scale it up massive or shrink it down tiny. And that's because it's just mathematics um, telling how to draw the shape. It's like draw three points, one here, one here, one here. But that's why when we get into drawing or when we get into using these freehand tools and erasing, it messes things up a little bit because now instead of having just a few simple points, I'm going to click this tool, which is the edit node tools by path. We'll use this a lot later. But see, now look how many points we have. When we go in and erase, it creates lots of unnecessary points. So if you're going to use that tool, you'll want to come in and erase these. At least I think you should. Come in and I'm just clicking on this node and hitting the delete key. And I'm probably getting too advanced for this video anyway because we'll do that a lot later. But then we can kind of clean up that line. But it's just not something that I ever do anyway. You don't want to do freehand. There's a freehand pencil tool where you can draw you know, freehand lines. But it's just it just creates messy looking things. Look how ugly this thing is. And it's just not worth it. So there's better ways, there's much better tools for drawing in Inkscape than doing anything freehand. So that's the word of caution I would give you is don't do freehand in Inkscape. Anything freehand, just don't do it. Instead, there's better ways where you can draw a path and then map a line or map text to a path or map, you know, you can use these paths. That's really the power of Inkscape. If you want to do some freehand art, you should use something like Krita or Photoshop or Inkscape. Uh, I mean, or or GIMP. But if you want to use some, if you wanted to do the power of Inkscape, you really want to be learning how to use these shapes and then draw shapes to accomplish your goal and edit the different nodes of that shape instead of freehand drawing. So that was kind of a rant. But in this next video, we're going to be looking at. Uh, We'll look at how to control more of the stroke and the fill options uh, for these different tools. So join me on that. Sorry, I created such an ugly mess in here. Look at us. See, look, I can't, and I can't erase this middle part now. I can't erase this ugliness that I created because it's part of this circle now. Isn't that terrible? We can't change it. We can't. It's all just part of this one object that we've drawn. So it's ugly. Anyway. I'll stop talking about that and we'll catch the next video looking at fill and stroke.